Pisces, this is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for November 6th, which is Friday. And I have a really cool day to talk about uh, with you. Today, a yod forms, um, and then this yod will be here until November 14th. So, and in the energies that it's going to be accenting is Uranus and Aries is going to be at the top of your yod. So a yod kind of looks like this like a little pattern up in the sky. The very top of the yod is going to be Uranus and Aries. And um, so the energy all leading up to the top of your yod is quincunx energy, right? And then at the very base of the yod, this energy right here, I like to look at it like a little door that opens up and reveals and opens up the top of the energy. So right here, where we're really closed off and we're really um, not aligned, and it's 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 um, it's feeding to other energies. It's blocking those energies from manifesting really good, um, healthy vibration. Is all this Uranian and airy um, and, and Uranus and Aries energy? But the energies that this that our ego. And all this Uranian energy is blocking is um, from giving us a beautiful sextile for these day, for these um, next few days is uh, Jupiter and Virgo and the Sun and Scorpio. So the Sun and Scorpio, as we've been talking a lot about, is really honestly the area that um, allows us to be very self-reliant. If we're aligned with ourselves, we're very self-reliant and we're in control. We're in control of our outcomes and our perspectives, and we provide ourselves with our own uh, motivation and momentum. And usually there's a deep desire when the sun is in Scorpio to push forward and and give us um, some amazing um, momentum, I guess, in where we want to go because um, – Scorpio energy is ruled by Mars, and Mars is the planet of passion. So there's a there's a lot to be said when this energy source is blocked, um, and and it pulls it into the lower vibration. So right. So what's the lower vibration of a sun in Scorpio? Well, that is um, they're obsessive. They're super intense. Um, you know, they're very manipulative. Um, very arrogant. Um, very demanding and unforgiving and just very cold and calculating. So you can see that we don't want this energy source to stay negative for long. So we got to figure that. So that's this part of the quincunx, right? We still got this other side of the quincunx where we've got ego and then we've got um, Jupiter and Virgo. So I really never like to see Jupiter in a lower vibration in the quincunx energy because anytime Jupiter is in a quincunx energy and it can be very, very malefic, big time malefic because everything that Jupiter does is big, right? And so if it's in a negative energy, um, then it expands your life exponentially negatively um and this could be a health issue or it could be a poor coping method or it could be a work issue just blows up in front of your face um and so we've got our soul heart desire our core right um and we've got ego and we've got um Jupiter taking a look at our coping methods and health and mental well-being. So these are energies we want to unlock. We want to we want to we want to open this door and we want to figure out what the message is. And astrologers call a yod the finger of God. And basically it's a big question. There's a, that's why there's so much momentum in these three energy sources because there's a lot to figure out over the until about the 14th there's something big that it wants to talk to you about and it and the biggest way for human beings to pay attention is we get a jolt of negative energy because that really snaps us into shape and makes us really just pay attention because we don't like feeling bad right so things that could be emphasized during this is 
um, ego, um, where, where our deepest desires lie, how are they not being met? Um, um, the freedom to be authentic, right? Uh, we could, um, we, we want to unlock our potential and there's something blocking that. Um, there is, there's an, there may be an, a, a, a need to rebel uh, against somebody who's trying to control an outcome and therefore could try to, um, stop you from shining, I guess, or even, and this could be a very ego based person or an ego based um, desire could be standing in the way of you aligning with your authentic purpose and, and your uh, need, and which could cause coping methods to get really out of control. I want you guys to be super careful of if you guys are falling into poor coping methods, just expect that that's going to be challenged. And if you're ignoring a health problem, it's going to get worse. So really, if you were given a routine, medication routine, um, ritual or routine, um, exercise routine that you were supposed to be following that came up during this time, if you were supposed to be doing some physical therapy that you are not doing, um, expect that to be emphasized during these next few weeks. Maybe you experience more pain or, or your um, outcome starts to go out of control again and you need to get realigned with what the purpose was for you to start to motivate you to move in a different direction with your health. Um, maybe some mental well-being habits are going to be um, um, questions. And you guys... This is a lot of ego. I mean, anytime you get your son in Scorpio, you're dead set. You're dead set against you want what you want. And there is enough emotional desire for you to not budge. And then on top of that, I mean, I don't know if you've ever known a Scorpio, but there's some of the most um, regimented people I've ever known. And they really are super hard headed and fracking stubborn. And then you've got all this Uranus and energy stubborn, and you've got, um, you've got Aries energy, which is just, it's very ego oriented and it's very impulsive and impatient. And you also have Jupiter energy, which could, the, it feels very entitled, right? It feels very, uh, it's very pleasure seeking energy. And so you really want to figure out what this yacht is. And, and this isn't all bad. This is, those are for the people that are really not in alignment yet. This could be their awakening part of that moving forward energy I was talking about yesterday. And <laughs> The messages that you receive um, from the universe could be a quick slap on your ass. <laughs> so um, for those of you that are energetically connected and you look forward to messages from the universe and you are you are um, one of those people that um, are highly inquisitive and you have and you're really festering in all this mercury and Scorpio energy. A yod is delicious right? A yod is, oh my God, what are they asking me? I've got to figure it out, right? There's going to be those people out there that have to figure out the next, for the, um, the next couple weeks, like, what is this all time message that I need to receive? Because this could hold a key to something even better that I don't necessarily know about. So for those people, you are going to just feel nothing but beautiful sex tiles today because, Pluto in Capricorn is going to be sextiling Mercury in Scorpio, the Sun in Scorpio, and Chiron in Pisces. Okay, that is that is personal power, right? That is um, that is that is routine. That is control over your outcome, and that is goal oriented. Um, momentum behavior, right? That is all sex styling with your authentic purpose, with the, you know, with information and moving forward and knowledge and day-to-day -day thinking. And, and it's also a sex styling Chiron and Pisces, which is opening you up to ascension and purpose and, and beauty and, soul-based endeavors, right? This is this is removing the material world essentially from your life and connecting you with source and connecting you with spiritual outcomes, karmic outcomes that are not 
karmic debt that you have to pay, but karmic um, what you were put here for. So um, it has the potential to be beautiful, 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 beautiful. And I feel I feel very be this is it's like eating um, oh, pumpkin pie. I love eating everything I equate to food because I really love food. <laughs> Pumpkin pie is probably my most favorite um, snack to eat, and um, it's like having, oh, with tons of whipped cream. Okay, pumpkin pie with a fresh one with with the perfect crust, because you have to have the perfect crust, and then it's oodles of whipped cream. I'm talking like when I put a pile of whipped cream on, it's that fracking high, and then I smash it down, and I and I, and then I just take a whole, it's like like pumpkin whipped cream really <laughs> it's like that today so um I want you guys to really okay so the key is why is everything pointing up to ego right why is everything pointing up to ego or something's not aligned something's not energetically connected you may not be energetically connecting or you may not even know how to identify your ego at this stage because how you used to identify your ego was one way and how your ego, how you're, how you're dealing with your ego now is something different. So it may not even be that you're, that nothing is even going wrong in your life. Um, it's just that you need to figure out a direction, right? And you're at, you've been asking for direction, right? You want to know if you come up to a fork in the road, which way turn left or right? Guess what? This question starts to tell you which way to turn. You just got to figure it out. You got to find the key. You got to unlock the door down here, right? In your yard. And you got to go into this room and you got to look at, you know, the message that's on the ceiling that you couldn't see before this. It's a mystery. It's super, ew. And this, all the Scorpio in the sun and in Mercury loves a good intrigue and loves a good mystery. So this is a super sweet day filled with lots and lots of challenging um, um, energy, but in a good way. <clears throat> I want to leave you with this. The sextile that we want optimally, um, as soon as we can get it, is Jupiter and Virgo is going to sextile the sun in Scorpio. So we're talking about Jupiter really can expand transformation, right? We don't have to go through a long, slow, tedious um, transformation process. We get sometimes it's almost like we unzip a file. That's what it is. We unzip a file. And um, so, you know, when you click on it and it says unzip the file and you just see the little bar go whoop. And it unzips the file and then it just opens up your thing. And um, that's kind of what it would feel like if we could get to that sextile. It can expand. Um, we could start to work on new beginnings in relationships, um, new beginnings where where we had past days um, based endeavors that disappointed us. We could have um, we could have a new thought that could really open up, you know, that. The potential of that situation that was that was before uh, blocked um, we could it could help us develop a uh, positive coping methods um, it, it could there could be a breakthrough and a health related um, issue if not just the hope of getting better is better than feeling constant pain and, and knowing that you're never gonna get out of that situation. It, it, it can unlock that hope to be able to walk, talk, whatever, whatever your health related issue is to get your sugars down or to get your weight down or whatever. It can unlock the hope. And sometimes hope is all you need to get to the next level in your life. Oh my gosh. We're going to talk a lot about the yacht, but thank you guys so much for watching Annette's Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again tomorrow.